Yeah, well, I've, I've actually had uh, back issues for a very long time. It's sort of it's one of those ongoing jokes in my house. It's like the black power, um, you know, a sheep and a set of stairs have in common. Uh, they will serve to knack my back. I, I first got run over by a car full of mongrel back in 1990, and um, that was sort of initially, you know, sort of does, does some back damage, but I could continue training. And then uh, training for the Ironman in uh, 1996, I got hit a sheep on a downhill in a bike race. We head first into the road, damaged the disc again. Uh, that actually led me stopping racing for 10 years. At that stage, I was uh, an elite level mm -hmm. um, triathlete, representing New Zealand and half Ironman and Ironman distance. Um, so that was, you know, sort of a career-ending thing. Um, I couldn't really get back into training because I couldn't find anybody to sort of, you know, that could stabilise the injury. And then I came and started working with you um, back in 2006, and that was great. Um, at, back in the 2006, I started bowing up the regular competing game, which was good, and you know, sort of got better and better. I think a really important point is people um, respond to injury, and you know, they they overcome the symptoms, but then they don't put in, uh, you know, a, a positive progressive management program. And the big difference was that I started actually maintaining. You know my my spinal strength on an ongoing basis, even when I wasn't suffering pain or when I wasn't injured. So that was the, the really big difference, and then allowed me to get consistency and stability without my back, you know, flaring up and causing some issues. I uh, was running through some trails quite quickly. I pulled my toe and smashed the front of my thigh into the face of a step, mm -hmm. and that um, you know caused a massive wrenching on my hips. And uh, as you can imagine, a big twisting, cheering force just took that disc that was already. Um, injured and just completely blurred with it. Um, interestingly, sort of the people sort of said when they did my MRI that I had good musculature around my back, and if I hadn't had that, it could be much, much worse. Um, the prognosis at that stage was quote unquote 99% certainty of having surgery. So having a disectomy, having it taken out, and having the you know L5 and S1 fused together, so I would have had no flexibility in my lower back. But um, we sort of uh, got to the stage where we thought we'd have a shot at. Um, putting some cortisone into the back, uh, that settled it down to the stage where I could start you know, working again on the back machine and doing Pilates with the team here at Functional Physio and just started building up my strength and my range of motion again um, and you know, sort of over the course of time it became much, much better um, to the stage where I actually um, you know, won the New Zealand Half Ironman Championships in 2011. Get us all back, you know. People, they don't want to do anything, you know. But actually, I've found that if you have a really well ordered structured program, which you know takes into account, you know, your, your spinal strengthening, your, your core exercises, and, and slowly builds up your range of movement, you can actually come back into it quite early. Um, we were very systematic in how we set up the plan. First and foremost, was using the back machine where the range of movement was very, very small. The weights were very, very light, but gradually the muscles, you know, freed up. The, you know, the inflammation stayed down and we're able to progressively, like any, you know, thing, just have a really ordered, steady, uh, progressive build-up. Um, there, there was about three or four weeks of um, just doing physio and spinal strengthening. Uh, then I introduced swimming because it wasn't weight-bearing, um, and that was really good. And then once my forward flexion improved and my core strength was back up, I was able to add cycling. So it was really, it was good. It was, you know, spinal strengthening, swimming, cycling, and then once everything stabilised, I was able to start running on soft surfaces. Anybody who's got a back injury, and has been stopped, um, you know, from doing the sports they enjoy, you know, and love. It is missing a trick if they don't come in. Here. You know, I mean, first and foremost, come in, get a test on the back machine. You know, get a picture of where you're at, and, and then it's like anything. It's you know, it's a muscle group. It's you, you, you train it with a good systematic plan. You'd be amazed what you come back from. I had a number of physios tell me that I would never run again. Not only have I been able to train more consistently because I don't get injured, so you, you, you know you're able to just consistently play off. But I've actually found a massive performance increase from using spinal strength. And what I really noticed was that once my back it got really strong, I, I you know sort of can do multiple repetitions of quite a bit over my body weight, which is which is yeah. good. You know, with a lot of people with weak back um, will have issues. You know, sort of reaching your body weight. Um, but it, it's meant for me, like running and swimming, you know, posture is very, very important because you're swimming horizontal in the water, you know, your lower back strength and the abdominal strength is crucial for holding a good body position and maintaining a streamline. Likewise, 
with running, you know, the, the, the better your body is, your upper body is, the more stable your core is, the better form you can have running. And so those things are great from an efficiency point of view. But on cycling, when your lower back is strong, you can, you know, you can basically anchor your pelvis on the seat and not have so much more power on the bike. It's, it's amazing. It actually made me a quicker rider using this as part of my, um, part of my program.